Hello Set Apart Saints. In this video, I'm going to talk about how the Harlot Roman Catholic Church of the Antichrist Beast Popes fulfills the description in Revelation 18. If you haven't done so, I recommend watching the previous videos in this Revelation series so that the explanation is in context. If you're benefiting from the videos, please like them, make comments, and share them so that YouTube lists them for others to learn. If you want more information about the fulfillment of Revelation, the Revelation Timeline Decoded book provides it in detail. I've included a link in the video description. In my previous videos, I showed how the popes of Rome fulfill Bible prophecy as the little horn of Daniel 7, and the man of sin, the son of perdition of 2 Thessalonians 2, and the eighth king of Revelation 17, who leads the harlot church of Rome, which is called Mystery Babylon the Great. People proclaim that Revelation 18 describes the USA, or the global deep state, the Freemasons, etc., but I will prove that Messiah is describing the goods that the Roman Catholic Church purchases, which have made the kings of the earth rich, which is why they will be sorrowful when she is desolated. Revelation 18.1 says, And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lighted with his glory. Revelation 18 is a continuation of the narrative of Revelation 17, in which John was shown the harlot Roman Catholic Church of the Antichrist beast popes who rose to power over the fallen Roman Empire. Revelation 17 ended by saying that the ten kingdoms of Western Europe, who had previously given their power to the popes and served them in persecuting the saints, would turn on the harlot church and desolate it. It says, And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. Revelation 18.2 says, And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit in a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. So Babylon the Great is the codename of the city of Rome, from which the harlot church is based. Her basilicas and rituals are full of idolatry in the symbolic worship of pagan gods of the Babylonian mystery religion. Revelation 18.3 says, For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are wax rich through the abundance of her delicacies. It's saying that the great men of the earth have become wealthy because of her purchases from them. And we'll see that played out. Revelation 18.4 says, And I heard another voice from heaven, saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye not be partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. So the primary plea is to Catholics to come out of the harlot church of Rome and to make their election sure by faith in Messiah alone, not by the sacraments, not through a pope or a priest or Mary. Revelation 18, 5 to 6 says, For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God had remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to her works. In the cup which she has filled, fill to her double. The Antichrist beast popes have used Catholic priests to mislead billions of people with the false salvation message of works through the sacraments and that Mary is the intercessor to the Father. The popes are called the man of sin because they cause Catholics to break the commandments of the Heavenly Father and to be lost in their sins if they're believing in salvation through the sacraments and through Mary. The popes have used Catholics to torture and kill tens of millions of saints. Revelation 18, 7-8 says, How much she had glorified herself and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her. For she said in her heart, I sit a queen, and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she'll be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. So through the trumpet judgments and the bold judgments, the popes of Rome did not repent. Instead, they continued their adulterous, murderous ways. Revelation 18, 9-11 says, And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and live deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they see the smoke of her burning, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come, and the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buys their merchandise any more. So the Satan-empowered Roman beast kingdom uses the Babylonian Talmud and Egyptian Kabbalah sorcery to steal, kill, and destroy. Goodness knows what takes place below the Vatican in the catacombs of the Temple of Cybele, and the proclamation that the Vatican has become the habitation of devils may point to the top leaders being demon-possessed. When you look at the history of the popes of Rome, you see how leaders of countries have been intoxicated with power and riches as they, as they carried out the orders of the Antichrist beast popes. No authority on earth has historically interacted with the world's leaders, the kings of the earth, more than the popes. Every U.S. president visits the pope, as do the leaders of most other countries. Vatican City is the biggest financial power 
wealth accumulator and property owner in existence, possessing more material wealth than any bank, corporation, giant trust, or government anywhere on the globe. The kings of the earth point to the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, who have become enormously wealthy because of their alliance with the Antichrist beast pope and the false prophet Jesuit superior general. According to the Vatican Billionaires by Avro Manhattan, the Vatican has billions of shares in the most powerful international corporations such as Gulf Oil, Shell, General Motors, Bethlehem Steel, General Electric, International Business Machines, TWA, etc. And note that it's not saying billions of dollars, but billions of shares, which is worth much more. In Revelation 18.4, Messiah has given one last plea to his saints to come out of the influence of the Babylonian harlot church. He's not saying to come out of the USA or New York City as people say that they're Babylon. Her primary influence is over 1.3 billion Catholics who revere, which is the mark on the forehead, and obey, which is the mark on the right hand, their actions, the Antichrist beast pope. Her secondary influence is over the daughter churches, who teach concepts created by the Roman beast kingdom's councils, who teach a false gospel and a false messiah. The popes and priests of the Roman Catholic Church are proud, boastful, and arrogant, proclaiming to be Messiah's one true church, when all the while they've been misleading people with teachings that are contrary to Scripture, and they're led by the Antichrist beast pope. The judgments against the harlot Roman Catholic Church will come quickly. Messiah is saying that when the harlot church of Rome is destroyed, thou will end her purchases from the kings of the earth. It's pointing to her riches, which she has given to the kings of the earth for their services and their goods. So she is the one who is making the purchases. It's not saying that she's a city or country which produces a lot of goods. It's saying that her purchases enrich the kings of the earth who serve her. This is why they'll mourn when she's desolated. The Roman Catholic Church is the largest non-governmental provider of higher education in the world. As of 2016, the church supports 43,800 secondary schools, 95,000 primary schools, and 1,358 Catholic colleges and universities. The Roman Catholic Church is the largest non-governmental provider of health care services in the world. It has around 18,000 clinics, 16,000 homes for the elderly and those with special needs, and 5,500 hospitals. The Vatican not only owns the 110 acres of Vatican City, but roughly 177 million more acres of various lands throughout the world, including the hundreds of Vatican emissaries that are legally titled to the Holy See as an independent nation. Standing far off may point to seeing it take place on TV or the internet video, just like we watched Notre Dame burning on April 15th, 2019. Or it may point to distancing themselves from any association with her. Revelation 18:12 says, The merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and of pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and all thine wood and all manner vessels of ivory and all manner vessels of most precious wood and of brass and iron and marble. Though the many universities and other institutions that she owns are grand in their own right and cost a lot of money to build and maintain, this part of the description seems to be pointing specifically to her purchases for her many church affairs. As of May 2018, the Catholic Church in its entirety comprises 3,160 ecclesiastical jurisdictions, including over 645 archdioceses, 2,851 dioceses, and 2,021 700 parishes in the world. Google Catholic Basilicas and you will find the Wikipedia page. And you can go through that page and you can scroll up and down and see all the basilicas. You can see images, but I'm going to show you the four arch basilicas. So these are the grand ones. Here's the Basilica of St. Mary Major. And you can just see how grand it is from the outside. When you go inside, you can see, remember, what, what, the description of her, right? So when you see it, you see the marble floors. You see the marble columns. You see the gold. You see the wood you see the different things that were described in revelation 18 you can see how grand it is and, and you'll see this in more detail in other images but just look up look at the ceiling look at all the work that went in the ceiling look look at the main altar at the end and you'll see a close-up of that in a second but i'm just trying to portray so you can see how grand these places are and how much money and how much work it took and how these great men of the earth became rich from providing these services so here's the altar and i mean these places are just art museums. I mean, everywhere you look, there's art, there's, there's sculpted images that fills the whole place. So statues of marble, you got ivory, you got gold. It's just these places are totally epic. And here's the dome and you look up and look how grand it is and look at all the images right here, right? Of Mary in the middle and you have the other gods right here. Every point, it's just amazing art detail. This took a lot of work and a lot of money to make. And here's the backside of it, and you can see how grand it is. And you can also see an Egyptian obelisk placed in front of it, which means that it represents a 
temple of sun god worship. Here's the Basilica of St. Paul outside the walls. Once again, we see the marble. We see the gold. We see the intricate work. How much, how much work did it take? How much money did they pay to get craftsmen, artists to build these things? So here's the ceiling. Every box right here is, is intricate and it's done in gold. Got marble columns all the way down. You have images, faces right here all the way. You have windows, stained glass windows all the way down here. I mean, what this building costs, what this room costs is a fortune. You have artwork like this, and it's just intricate. You go to an art museum, you're not going to see things that are as amazingly done as these, and they paid a lot of money to get these things done. Here's the Arch Basilica of St. John Lateran. Outside again, we see how grand it is with all the statues on top. We see the marble columns, right? We see all the intricate work. Inside, once again, all the things that are described, gold, marble, wood, all built in these facilities. Look at the artwork that's just in every dome, every nook, every cranny, everywhere you look. And you see the grandeur. You see the artwork here. You see the statues here. You see the ceiling. Go all done in gold, all different boxes that are telling a different story, different symbols, different. And here you see the marble floors. You see statues. Every one of these right here is a statue. It's a piece of art in itself. You see there's up here, there's more carvings. Up here, there's more art. It's just an amazing, amazing place to be. Here's the ceiling. So once again, every box, every box is done in gold. It's got symbols. It's art. It's, it's just, they are art museums, which cost billions and billions of dollars. Here is Semiramis and her son, Tammuz, right? Supposedly Mary and Jesus, but it's their symbolism of the moon goddess and the incarnate Christ child. And here's the close-up of the statue. Look how elegant this is. Look how well done this is. There are just dozens of these statues in that place. And once again, in front of it is an Egyptian obelisk. And here's St. Peter's Basilica. So the outside, once again, we see statues on top. We got the dome. Got the marble columns, go inside, and it's the same story. Marble floors, gold, right? Also, look at the arches. Every single box is more detailed art. You have statues, statues, statues everywhere. You have the dome on top. All this is artwork, 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 right? All this is gold. You have artwork here, there, on all four corners. Here's leading up to the great throne. So you see these columns, these massive columns. Everywhere you look. There's art, art and gold, more art here, statues here, more art up here. I mean, this place is full. It's a, it is an art museum that costs many, many, many billions of dollars. And here's the main throne room. So you see the elegance of the gold and the sun symbol representing their incarnate Christ child, Tamos. You see statues, more statues, gold here and the domes up above. And once again, you see the Egyptian obelisk right in front of the temple making it a temple of sun god worship. So if you go to the Wikipedia page for Catholic basilicas, you see the listings for all of them. You, you can click and on the right you'll see uh, an image and you can click on the one image and it'll take you into different images of the interior. And you can view the church's images and you can see how luxurious they are. Um, so you can see how much money was spent on them. You can see the building's images and see how large and ornate they are. If you click on the image of the building, you see other photos of the interior, the riches that have been spent on these places, which are like art museums. They're filled with the goods that Revelation 18 describes. The rebuilding of St. Peter's Basilica in the 16th century involved the genius skills of Michelangelo, Bernini, Raphael, and other great artists of the day. The riches and treasures lavished on the stately buildings of the Roman Catholic Church are beyond description. And just scroll down the list of basilicas and you see as of November 2019, there were 1,690 basilicas in the world, 573 in Italy alone. Can you imagine how much money it costs to build those institutions and the fortune spent to maintain them? An Economist magazine investigation offered a rough and ready estimate of $170 billion in annual spending by the Roman Catholic Church per year. This money is to run the organizations and salaries. So Google images of Catholic monasteries to see how large and grand some of them are. They're like fortresses. Google images of Catholic Basilica gold or Catholic Basilica art or Catholic Basilica marble. You see their basilicas are filled with gold, silver, marble, wood, brass, and iron. Gold and silver adorn the buildings with gold leaf and solid gold in many of the designs. Her priests are decked with gold crosses. The bishop's mitres are decorated with gold and silver and precious stones and pearls. This is the merchandise that they purchase from the merchants of the world. Google images of Catholic cardinals bishop silk. And what do you see? Her priests are dressed in fine linen and silk garments. So you see the different 
garments that she wears, the alb, the cossack, right? And you see the description that is the purple for bishops, red for cardinals, white for the pope. And the description continues that cardinals wear different clothing and different collars at different events. And when you read the description, you see the cardinals wear black silk. They wear silk stitching and silk buttons. They have a scarlet sash made of silk, right? They have silk capes. Google images of Catholic cardinals, bishops, purple, scarlet. So those key words, what do you see? Her priests are dressed in the Roman Catholic Church mandated colors of purple and scarlet. Thinewood can point to algum trees or cypress or cedar used in temples for rafters. The word vessels can point to a bowl or cup, but the strongest Greek po word points to equipment or apparatus or goods. So it can simply point to construction materials for their grand basilicas. It says that she purchased all manner of ivory, precious woods, brass, iron, and marble. Their basilicas are lavishly adorned with these type of materials. For example, the Basilica of the Sacred Heart of Paris opened in 1914. The whole basilica is made out of marble. You can see this epic building. It's all cut out of marble. One of the words describing the Harlot Church. How much did that cost to make all of this out of marble? Here's the close-up look. So all this is cut marble, and it's fine, fine marble. It's high-end marble. So again, she's fulfilling the description in Revelation 18. It took seven architects and nearly 40 years to complete the structure. Its ornate exterior is constructed of costly travertine marble. Interestingly, the Vatican gift store near St. Peter's sells merchandise made of gold, silver, precious stones, pearls, graven images of Mary and others. They bought merchandise from the companies of the kings of the earth to resell at higher prices. We see at the Basilica of the Sacred Heart, we see Mary being deified. So that's Mary, Where, where's the Messiah, right? Now we find Messiah, the golden heart of Messiah, the Catholic Messiah. We see the extensive artwork, the glory of the marble right here, the gold, all the things that were described. Revelation 18, 13 says, And cinnamon, and odors, and ointments, and frankincense, and wine, and oil, and fine flour, and wheat, and beasts, and sheep, and horses, and chariots, and slaves, and souls of men. Her ceremonies are filled with incense made from frankincense and cinnamon, which is burned in ivory and brass censers. The Eucharist ceremony uses wafers made of fine flour. They carry out this cer ceremony many times a week in every church, so imagine how much they use. Wine is for the chalice, used in daily masses and drunk by the priest. They use three holy oils at the baptism and the sacrament of anointing of the sick and the extreme unction when administered to the dying. 221,700 parishes requires a lot of these products. Horses and chariots were used for popes, cardinals, archbishops, and bishops to ride in state and grandeur. The slaves may be found in celibacy and servitude in those who give their lives without remuneration to serve the papacy. So the, the nuns, the monks, the souls of men they trade in are those lost to Messiah by believing that the false Christ and the false church can save them. What is the whole system of masses for the dead paid for out of the money drawn from mourning relatives, but traffic in the souls of men? So how did the Vatican accumulate all that wealth? One method was to put a price tag on sin. They actively marketed guilt, sin, and fear for profit by selling indulgences. Worshippers were encouraged to prepay for their sins that they had not committed and get them pardoned ahead of time. Those who didn't pay up risked eternal damnation. Pope Leo V rebuilt St. Peter's Basilica by selling tickets out of hell and tickets to heaven, selling souls. Another method was to get wealthy landowners and widows to hand over their land and wealth to the church on their deathbed in exchange for a blessing that would supposedly enable them to go to heaven. Apart from the hoarded gold, thousands of church buildings, thousands of estates, they have purchased art, books, sculpture, and relics that are impossible even to guess their value. The Vatican vaults are filled with this merchandise. There's one additional aspect regarding slaves and the souls of men. Unum Sanctum is a papal bull issued by Pope Boniface VIII in 1302. It gave them legal authority over all people using Roman law, temporal as well as spiritual. Using Lexifora maritime law, they designate every person as a corporate entity. They assign people a birth certificate with a tax ID number. People are stocks to be owned and traded, so in essence, they are trading in the souls of men. Revelation 18, 14 and 19 says, The merchants of these things, which are made rich by her, shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment, weeping and wailing, and saying, Alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. For in one hour so great riches is come to naught, and every shipmaster and all the company and ships and sailors and as many as trade by sea stood afar off, 
and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like unto this great city? And they cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city, wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea, and by reason of her costliness, for in one hour she is made desolate. Now prophecy teachers say that the great city can't be Rome because she is not a large manufacturing city and she doesn't have a great seaport. But John is not saying that the great city is making or selling the goods, nor is it saying that this one city is receiving all the goods. The great city is the Roman beast kingdom. It's saying that when the great city is destroyed, then the harlot church won't buy that merchant's goods anymore. It's saying that the Roman Catholic Church is the one who is buying the merchant's goods and that they will weep when that ends. The Roman Catholic basilicas, cathedrals, parishes, monasteries, nunneries, and schools are worldwide where the merchants ship the goods. The evil elite will lament her desolation, for by her they were made wealthy. There's another aspect of the Roman Catholic Church being related to water. The Holy See reportedly controls the world via admiralty law, also known as maritime law, the law of the sea, through which their banks control currency. Their fiat money flows around the world, stealing the wealth of the nations through inflation. Since the 11th century, it has governed vessels' operation and ownership of the ocean, transport, insurance of cargo, commerce, bills, navigation, liability, liens, and finance. There's no mistaking that the great city of Revelation is Rome, home of the Satan-empowered Roman beast kingdom. Physical Babylon, Jerusalem, America, New York, etc. do not have the distinction of fulfilling the detailed description in Revelation 17 and 18. Revelation is the historical narrative of the Satan-empowered Antichrist peace popes in the Roman Catholic Church called Babylon, waging war on Messiah's saints called Holy Jerusalem. Can you imagine being alive when this judgment happens and seeing it on the news? Though we don't want people to be killed and lost in their sins, there will be rejoicing when the harlot church is rightly judged. I pray that the leaders of Laodicea's church era will be used to teach the truth about prophecy fulfillment, expose the deceptions of the enemy, to set the captives free, thus her power is cast down and destroyed. Revelation 18, 22-23 says, And the voices of harpers and musicians and pipers and trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in thee, and no craftsman of whatsoever craft he be shall be found any more in thee, and the sound of millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee, and the light of the candle shall shine no more at all in thee, and the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of earth, for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. So once again, it's saying, it's pointing to the craftsmen. I mean, I just showed you the basilicas, and you can you can see all the craftsmen it took, all the artists it took to do the art, do all the gold, do all the statues, all the floors. It took a lot of people and a lot of money to make that happen. So the craftsmen are the artisans who made the great basilicas, many of them in the 19th century. The great men pointed people like the Rothschilds, Rockefellers, Hotbergs, Carringtons, Bronfmans, Oppenheimers, etc., who have become immensely wealthy by the Roman Catholic Church. Now the word sorceries is Strong's Greek dictionary word pharmakia, which means medication, magic, sorcery, and witchcraft. It's based on the Greek word pharmakias from which means a druggist or a poisoner a magician a sorcerer google medical association and you see a snake around a pole seen throughout the modern medical professions symbolism another symbol recognized throughout the field is called the staff of hermes which has a pole and two intertwining snakes and the wings of an eagle on top the american medical association now has a pole with a snake encircling it which forms three six shapes symbolizing six 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 you see a six and a six and a six, pointing to their sorcery. One of the ways that they become extraordinarily rich is through the sick care industry. They take in control of how doctors treat patients. It's not based on health care, as doctors don't focus on nutrition, water intake, minimizing toxin intake, detoxification, exercise, etc. Instead, it's focused on prescribing medications that treat the symptom but not the cause. This is what Revelation 18.23 is pointing to, as they've created a culture with foods that lack nutrition, toxins in food and body care products, metals and toxins and shots chemicals in the air and water. The system is designed to poison our bodies so that they can control us. In 1983, 10 shots were given to children. Now it's 74 and increasing. It sets people up to have health issues for life, which keeps them going to their doctors to continue this vicious cycle, which makes great men wealthy. Fluoride and lithium in the water dumb people down so they don't see all the deceptions and don't fight back. So be sure to filter your water. Today, there's a massive push for people to get shots. It's sorcery that gives the evil ones control over people and you want no part of it. Please, please do your research.
Revelation 18, 24 says, And in her was found the blood of the prophets and of the saints and all that were slain upon the earth. People argue that it's pointing to Jerusalem because that's where the prophets were killed. But, but Revelation describes what takes place after it was written, not before. The saints have not been killed in Jerusalem. The Roman beast kingdom has killed them. We've already seen how the Antichrist beast popes made war with the saints, killing tens of millions during the Dark Ages and Inquisition. In the next video, I'll show you how the popes of Rome fulfill Bible prophecy as the Antichrist beast. Love y'all. Shalom.